So if you haven't seen my last video about my Raspberry Pi NAS, let me take you through it. It was a Raspberry Pi 5 with two external USB drives and it didn't work well. I had constant troubles with the drive suddenly disconnecting and I also wanted to set up RAID, but because the USB connection is so unreliable, it is not recommended to do so. But today we're going to be talking about, well, this, and why is it the best way to make an ass out of your Raspberry Pi. It is called the Radza Penta Seda Hat. But before we get to that, only 6% of you are actually subscribed. So if you enjoy my videos and you want to help me out, please consider subscribing, checking out my Discord server and Patreon where I post weekly exclusive content. Thank you. But let's start at the beginning. If you want to make a NAS out of your Raspberry Pi, you have many options. The first one is do what I have done, which I would not recommend, and connect USB drives to your Raspberry Pi. And as I've already mentioned, say buy to RAID. And also it's very annoying that the drives that I at least use didn't get enough juice from the Raspberry Pi itself, which meant I had to buy an, a dongle with a external power brick, which means that I had to use two power outlets for this single Pi-NAS solution. The second solution is actually very interesting. If you have the Raspberry Pi 5, and not the older ones, it actually comes with a very cool slot which will be known by many of you and that is the PCIe slot. Simply put, this slot allows you to transfer much much more data than your normal USB or GPIO pin. This opens up endless opportunities because data isn't just, you know, family photos or, I don't know, movies, it is also network data or computational data, like for example from AI accelerators. Anyway, I was just hinting at the sheer amount of possibilities that these slots actually give you, but let's get back to our topic. Some storage hats actually take the PCIe slot and turn it into an M.2 port which allows you to connect a single NVMe SSD. That is great and you can actually create a PiNAS out of this, but for redundancy and for RAID, you always want more than one drive. Oh, and also because of the price, cooling and probably also the performance of the CPU, the PCIe slot that the Raspberry Pi 5 has is actually only the second generation of this slot, which is by now almost 20 year old tech. This means that it actually only allows you to transfer around 500 megabytes through a single lane, and Raspberry Pi only has a single lane, uh, which is much less than any NVMe SSD will allow you to transfer. But trust me, if you aren't Linus Tech Tips, the biggest bottleneck you will always get when building a NAS is your internet speed, because it will be, it will not be 500 megabytes a second. I don't know where you live and what kind of internet you got, but if you get 10 megabytes a second, that's actually considered to be like above average, really good internet. But where was I? Oh yes, RAID. Well, about a year ago, uh, this really cool SATA Pi head by a company called Vadza was introduced and there are three things that I absolutely love about it. One, it gives you the opportunity to connect up to five uh, SATA drives, one through these four SATA ports and one through this very special eSATA, which I actually haven't seen anywhere else. Two, it supports RAID 5, which is really good. Not only that it improves speeds, which we will not need because the bottleneck will be uh, the internet connection, as I've already said, uh, but it introduces redundancy, which means that one of your drives can fail and you will not lose any data. And three, it is very user-friendly and plug and play. This means that the only thing that you will need next to your Raspberry Pi and the SSDs you have to buy is a 12 volt DC power adapter. I bought this 40 watt one from Avacom. Um, I think it's more than enough for, for what I need. Uh, just make sure that you buy the 5.5 to 2.5 millimeter dimensions. I bought one that had uh, the inner dimension of 2.1 millimeters and it just uh, surprisingly didn't fit. Oh my God, it doesn't fit. Wait, what? For $45 MSRP, which to be honest, it might be impossible to find uh, this thing at $45. I personally paid $65 with shipping. You get two FPC ribbon cables, which is actually really nice that you not only get one because these are really fragile. The eSATA to normal SATA and power cable. 
these two paper mounting plates for SSD which put them in the correct position to not put strain on the SATA connector, then the standoff and mounting plate screws and last but not least the pie hat itself. The installation itself is very easy. You just put the pie hat onto the Raspberry Pi, put all the standoffs on and then connect the FPC ribbon cable. There is a great tutorial with all of these steps on VADS's website so this will be definitely linked in the description. After that you have to install the Raspberry Pi imager and insert the SD card into your computer. I like to install the light version of Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit because we will not be needing uh, any graphical user interface or any more stuff that will just make our system more bloated. Oh, and also don't forget to set up SSH during the installation because we will be needing it because we will be installing everything remotely from our computer. Once all of that is done, take your SD card and put it back into your Raspberry Pi and turn it on. Oh, and another really cool thing about this Raspberry Pi hat is that it actually powers the Raspberry Pi itself through the GPIO pins, which means you only really need one power outlet. All of it is powered through this 12 volt DC power adapter. Once the Pi is on, you will probably want to run LSBLK to see if you can see the discs, uh, but don't worry if you cannot see them, we first have to turn on the PCIe slot. You need to go to boot, firmware and config and write this line into it to turn on uh, this slot. Save and reboot and then you will see that uh, for every single disc that you have inserted there is a single uh, blue LED which will light up now. Anyway, then just as in my last Raspberry Pi NAS video, there are two commands that you will use to install OpenMediaVault, which will be the software that will take care of, you know, these file systems and RAID and um, how you connect to it and SMBs and uh, users and so on. I will again post both of these into the description. Uh, just make sure that you reboot uh, after you run the pre-install command before you run the install command. After that, you will be able to type in the local IP address that was assigned to your Raspberry Pi and that you use to connect through SSH into your browser and Open Media Vault will open. The login details are admin and Open Media Vault as the password, but make sure that you change those. Now, normally we would use the Open Media Vault GUI to create file systems, but because I had issues in the past, and as far as I know, it only uh, supports RAID 1, 0, or 10, we will actually use MDMDM to create our own RAID 5 arrays. Again, there's this really cool VADSA tutorial for also doing this on their website and it will also be linked in the description. You basically just have to find out what the names of your disks are using lsblk and then a single command will actually uh, create this RAID 5 array. Additionally, because I knew that these disks were empty, I used uh, the command assume clean which made the creation of these arrays basically instant. After that, you format the array, but don't mount it yet. This will be done in the Open Media Vault GUI itself. Once the formatting is done, you go to uh, Open Media Vault to File Systems and you mount the created file system. You will be able to see it there. After that, you have to create a shared folder. I call mine home every time. And then there are two last steps which you need to do. One, create a user and give it a name and a password and then also set the permissions to read and write on the shared folder home. And the second one is uh, enabling SMB because without this you will not be able to access your um, shared folder. And that is it. And also don't forget to save your configuration after each step. There will like always be this yellow pop-up and it will tell you please um, save the configuration, you always do so. And now you should be able to access your Raspberry Pi NAS uh, when you're using macOS in this network or if you're using Ubuntu using this SMB command. I tested the speed by transferring a single video file and as expected the largest bottleneck by far was the internet connection so the speed was around 11 megabytes per second which is pretty solid for normal use, but when you're transferring large documents, it is a little bit of a hassle. But for me, for now, this will do. So that was the Radza SATA hat for the Raspberry Pi 5. In the future, I would also like to add some active cooling because as of now, there's only this really, really tiny passive cooler on the CPU of my Raspberry Pi 5. 
but I tested the temps and they never go above 65 degrees, which really isn't bad, but you don't want to stress the components when you don't have to. But is this Raspberry Pi 5 NAS something that you would consider? I think the price to performance ratio really isn't that bad and you also get a really cool project to learn a thing or two. But make sure to let me know in the comments what you think about it because I always like to hear your opinion. But that will be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe and also check out my Discord and Patreon in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.